Let's see, I'm loading, connecting to server. I'm waiting for that passing game info. Oh, it didn't even get to that. Retrieving server info. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. Although they do seem to be on process. So I wonder, are they playing their round two game yeah, already? It, it oh, is I see. Two. Right, this is round two. I thought they were playing their, uh, their round one game. Right, these guys are keen beans. They're starting with their their round. Oh, this is excellent. This is one of the teams that I've mentored previously. I posted a thread on Reddit and TFTV and all sorts, just asking for some newbie teams to mentor and get them into competitive. And I recognize these guys because I've played with them and mentored them before. Oh, this is brilliant. Bringing a tear to my eye. This is just, you know, serendipity, man. I think it was probably meant to be. It absolutely yeah. was. And then, uh, so I'm afraid I'm going to be potentially incredibly biased, so you'll have to stick up for the other team. Uh, no problem, man. Uh, can we... Mm, I wonder who the opponents are. Can you figure that out, Saito? Can you tell me uh, both who is in... Who's, who is Kratos' team and who are the opposition? Can we find that, that match so I know who I'm talking about? Uh, let's let's have a look. I know these some of these guys because they play for or they played for a Division 6 team called, uh, was it Six Small Beavers, something like that? Um, Start9 and Coconut. And of course, I know Kratos as well, who's their team mentor because he plays around a Division 1 level. Uh, the Enigma Zone crew, Yak, is going to be the mentor, I assume, um, for the blue team here, but I'm not quite sure what the team names are for either of them. Let's have a look. Are you on the case, Detective Admirable? No, <laughs> I hope you are, because I am set up the STD relay for our viewers out there. And hopefully we'll get those live stats too. The team is waiting for us. Both teams are waiting for us. So, you know, I can uh, take my sweet time here, Saito. But I know that Sherlock uh, Saito is on the case here, trying to figure out what the game is. We have the server. We have the teams. You know, there is... a. Uh, clearly evidence from which we can deduce which game, which fixture it is and start to get the crowd hyped you know, draw, draw a line in the sand here, you're either with Kratos or you're against him I think Oh I'm definitely with Kratos I, I'm afraid you're going to have to be vehemently against him in order to balance out this, uh, this casting duo you're going to have to be loving Cav, Nazboy Megazord um, It's Hobnobs and Yak, that's going to be the team that they are facing. I'm not sure exactly what the roster is going to be for those guys. I guess uh, Yak's going to be playing Medic and the rest. I have no idea, no idea about. But uh, I am struggling to find this team because it doesn't actually come up on their uh, on their profile page. Let's see, let's see. Detective Sajjah's on the case, fear not. I bet yeah, I could crack this in like 10 seconds. I'm going to search for Kratos and etf -2. Is he playing or is he just... Yeah, uh, yeah. The Flying Gummy Bears is one team. Okay, I'm already kicking your ass, Saito. Uh, and it's his round two game, so he's playing against Jai Chapman. That oh, I've already found it. I've Saito. already found it. <laughs> oh, you, you pit me at the post. <laughs> <laughs> and I only know because Sunny Black had to post me the link to the match page. I put it in Twitch chat there. This is the game we're going to cast, guys. Uh, the Flying Gummy Bears against Jai. How do you pronounce that? Jai? Jai? Jay? Oh, I'm not even going to bother. Chapman. Chapman. <laughs> Sonny Black pasted me the link too. And he's cursing your name. He's used an expletive here. He's a pretty rude guy, what can I say? He's just uh, got a lot of anger bottled up because he's the second best head admin after Permzilla. Yeah, that is uh, pretty much the absolute truth. The relay <laughs> should be up. It's going to be... Yeah. Are we connecting to the relay or are we going to sit in this STD? Whatever you want, man. I'm going to put it in Twitch. Here you go, guys. You can connect to that if you don't like CEO's camera work, but that just means that you're either blind and it's not going to help you anyway, or you're just an idiot. <laughs> but that is the option. I know some people like to watch STV and... I'm going to put it, oh, obviously, in Mumble as well. That would help. But we will have the live stats as well. That's just what we're waiting for momentarily. I'm going to share that with my casting combo here. And we will be getting underway. Are you in the server right now, Saichu? I am. I'm in the server watching these teams fly around on process middle, warming up, giving themselves the uh, 
<laughs> I'm just laughing at Sonny Black because he's he's threatening to just deliver me false information and nonsense so that I look like an idiot from now on. He doesn't have to do that to make you look like an idiot, say <laughs> <so> too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can give you a bit of a rundown of uh, flying gummy bears, if you like, because I know some of the uh, players on there. Their medic is going to be Kratos. That's the uh, the buddy for this team. So both of these teams as well, which is different different to the previous game that we casted, both of these teams have got a buddy. Both of these teams have got a buddy who, that have played uh, fairly, fairly high up. So they're, they're able to give them a decent idea of what to do on process and how to attack as a as a team so the uh, flying gummy bears their buddy is going to be kratos he's going to be on medic of course the demo man is going to be law law is kratos's uh, real life friend that he's roped into doing this so um no competitive experience i think the soldier combo is going to be coconut um who i have previously mentored so you know he's going to be awful and gay six um and the scout combo is going to be start nine who i am personally going to be looking for because he was rocking people in division six so i have no doubts that he'll be rocking people here as well and strife who i don't know about so he's he's an unknown for me okay i feel like uh you know i'm, I'm getting to know these guys already everything's set up on our end for the cast we've got the stv relay everyone can join that if they want to see the action firsthand and be their own cameraman and we have our live stat shenanigans so we can you know, give you that little extra bit of space. This is going to be round two of the first TF2 Center Archimedes Cup sponsored by Scrap.TF. It's going to be the Flying Gummy Bears versus Jai Chapman. And we have 12 players on the server. I'm giving Kratos the thumbs up to go. So that means uh, once the sort of time continuum of the 90 second STV d delay has uh, realigned itself, we will be getting underway. I've said go, they're going to ready up. So Saito, uh, give me more thoughts on this this matchup. Well, I'm going to run you down the blue roster as well, which is uh, Chapman. J Chapman. That's how you pronounce it, apparently. J, J Chapman. J Chapman. So um, that's uh, Yak is going to be their mentor who is on Medic. The scouts are going to be Itz and Cav, the demo man Nas Boy, and the soldiers Megazord and Hobnobs. So we'll see how they fare against the Flying Gummy Bears team. Um, it's going to be interesting. Process is uh, probably a less played map. It is an official map now, but it's only been an official map for, phew, help me out here, Admirable, a year, maybe? A year? A year? A year? A year. A year. Yeah. In my gap year. I made the process. <laughs> I think it's been played maybe longer than that, like a year and a half, two years, but even longer than that in America. Like I, I think it's deceptive. It's been here for quite a while now. It still does feel fresh. It plays quite differently from a lot of other maps. You've got loads of sick jumps. If you are skilled with those uh, projectile jumping classes, your demo man, your soldier, you can nail some really impressive rollouts and uh, chicks dig that, I believe. I can't hit the rollouts, man, so I don't know. Maybe Saicho? Have oh, you ever uh, impressed that. a girl with your super fast rollout to mid on CP process? Absolutely. I had the ladies in my room last night. I was showing them my process rollout. They were all over me. It was like a rash. Uh, I'd like to apologize to the, the feminist army as well. Please don't shut down our stream. We've just about gone on to the second round of this cup. I was only toying with you. But uh, you say you're going for the gummy bears or for uh, Yak's team? Oh, absolutely. The Gummy Bears all the way. I'm okay, believing okay. in my boys. So I'm all about the blue team here, you know, I'm all about Jai Chapman. Uh, I'm looking to Yak, you know, to just be that steady hand on the tiller here. Probably gun to my head. What did you say the demo man was called? Because you see I'm using this uh, ETFTL names plugin, and on mine he's called Bowling Like I'm Kobe. Oh, well, I thought I was using that plugin as well, so <laughs> <laughs> which demo man are you, uh, are you on about? On the, on the, on the blue team on For Jay Chapman. Chapman. <laughs> Mine's called Nas Boy. I wonder what, uh, what setup Suyo's using. He's probably using the ETFTL names, right? I don't know. He's going to tell me a mumble soon. But uh, yeah, he's using the aliases, so he sees him as uh, balling like I'm Kobe. So okay, I'm going to call him Kobe he's my, then. He's my big... Star of the team here, demo man, carry class. He's going to do huge work here, and he's going to smash Kratos into the ground. God of War, no more. He's going down. 
Yeah, you're stunned in the silence, I too. I know you've got no response to that. You've realised you've made a poor choice. I've just realised that both of the teams are going to be going live, so we are live with our Archimedes Cup coverage of this second round on CP Process. Let's have a look, see what the rollouts are like to mid. It is possible to get to mid incredibly quickly. It seems like it's going to be the blue team who are really fast to mid. Kobe is on mid like an absolute shot of lightning. And the soldiers are getting up on the crates there, taking advantage of that high ground straight away. Hobnobs does go down to some nice sticky spam by Law, and that's opened the way for FGB to really take some position on this mid. The only person still left in is Megazord, and he does get taken down there by Coconut, just with the shotgun. Of course, pulling out your escape plan marks you for critical uh, mini crits, sorry. So running away with it is uh, a bit of a risky strategy, but he nearly got away with it. Both teams have a soldier down. They're both going to respawn at exactly the same time. Yak has actually got his Uber a little bit quicker than Kratos has. They're, they're both running the normal Uber, though, the normal Medigun. Of course, in this 6v6 game, it's Medigun and Kritzkrieg allowed. Uh, they are the only two Mediguns that are allowed. You're not allowed the Vaccinator or the Quick Fix just because of how they play, how important the Medic is to the game. It just doesn't work out, unfortunately. So we are going to be seeing a Medigun versus Medigun battle at the moment. The, uh, the teams kind of centralize the blue team holding on top of the point because you get all the high ground. They're watching this area to the left from their perspective, which we call PC because there's some computers in there. And they're also watching this area to the right of Choke, which is uh, sewers because there used to be sewers in there. I promise you there used to be a sewer <laughs> system in there. It looks nothing like sewers at the moment. It looks just like a normal room, but yeah, we call it sewers just because in, in previous iterations of the map, it was... A load of sewers, a really big hit jump in here by Megazord as he tries to pop Karatos, but Karatos is having none of that. He doesn't pop for, for a measly attempt like that. And that's going to open the floodgates. Red team storming in through that choke point. A big jump from Coconuts as he comes in here, Admirable, and the Ubers are exchanged. Oh yeah, nice milk there from Yak. He didn't pop his Uber off immediately. He waited until the last possible moment and then gave his team just a few seconds extra in that uber battle, they're able to launch themselves forward with that last uh, dying flash of invulnerability. But they were just lacking a little bit of a coordination there. The demo man volan like I'm Kobe, was in deep, but no one was there to follow up on his damage. They've all ended up in that tiny choke point of the roller door. Gaysex comes in with a huge rocket. I think that was three kills from one rocket there for the flying gummy bears as they just continue to hammer on to last year. The mana advantage is huge. They just stack themselves onto that point and no one can contest them. And they're gonna claim the first round here. But I still believe, come on Jai Chapman, you've got this. I have just been informed as well that because we're competitive uh, competitive noobs and the only thing that we focus on is that, we've missed uh, a fairly popular trader, Strife, the the uh, uh, scout, sorry, for the red team is a fairly popular trader, so we'll be watching him as well. Uh, I think he does things on YouTube and stuff like that, but I'm missing all the action on this mid fight. Two players have gone down from FGB. This is an absolute appalling mid fight from them. Players are dropping left, right, and center. It looks like Admirable was perfectly correct when he predicted the comeback here. Kratos going down signals the end of that mid fight because they are going to have no uber charge to defend last. Yak stayed alive. The rest of his team doing an incredible job of defending him and playing really aggressively, jumping into the enemy team. Of course, you do far more damage when you're closer to the enemy team. Oh, check out Gaysex though. He's up. He's in their faces. <laughs> He's trying to do something, but unfortunately doesn't quite make it happen. Why did he dip into that porno voice there? I was like, oh, touch my tra la la. <laughs> oh, check out K6 here. Oh my god. Incredible. They push it on to last year. Huge Uber advantage. They've got the man advantage as well. It's K6 is just about to respawn. Uh, but look at the focus onto that heavy weapons guy. That's a big health target. They're going to try and kill him off with the focus fire from the team. And they really just bullied uh, the entirety of the red team playing gummy bears back into their own spawn doors there and they weren't able to contest the point they were outplayed and a great push there from my boys jay chapman tying things up here one one as we go to the third mid fight there's 25 minutes left on the clock it's anyone's game side show huge quick roma roll out here from megazord he's going to get on to the mid fight before anybody else using that jumping expertise and uh, he's going to set himself up for uh, for a good position on top of those crates coconut gets a frag and so does start nine but uh, they have lost two players of their own as well. 
Oh, unfortunately, Kobe does go down, and the Demoman is so important on a mid-fight like this where they have height advantage because Demoman is the one class that can put out consistent damage upwards. Uh, soldiers have to hit those direct rockets, which is very difficult. Scouts don't do very much damage if they're pretty far away, but Demoman can just kind of throw those stickies and pipes up there, and they will eventually hit. So uh, him going down was a bit of a blow there for Jay Chapman, but all they do is lose one point. There was a sniper on the field there for uh, just a moment, but they decided not to use him. I actually think this would have been a perfect time to run sniper. This is a great time to off-class and bring in the other the other classes that don't normally get such a such a yeah, show. Definitely. Uh, this uber v uber situation where you see now where neither team really wants to push because when you push in through a choke point you have to use your uber before the other team does and that means that they have a, a portion of the uber at the end where they can they can really punish you for it and so the aggressing team in these situations it's actually gay sex who's in he's on one hp floating around in midair but he's not cool, going to get yak. the uber out yak is going to hold that off and admirable lets out uh, a pump, little squeal of pleasure I'm pumping my fist in the air for my boy Yak, and uh, as you said, there is always this sort of hesitation whenever it's Uber versus Uber between two and three here. And another reason uh, is because having capped that midpoint, uh, the flying gummy bears are going to spawn forward. They, if they die here, they're going to spawn at CP2, so it's relatively closer for them. It's sort of like an implied advantage. They're going to Uber in through choke here, but Kratos, the medic, isn't going to commit. He's leave, going to leave Coconut in there deep to get that foresight. And they have eventually forced the enemy Uber, but they've lost Coconut. So now they know they need to play defensive there at that man disadvantage that we've been talking about. It's only a small one though, but it's still worth pushing on here when there's no Uber charge available. The man advantage becomes even more powerful. Megazord straight in there onto Kratos. Huge surf. Picks up his own kit, having flown through the air there. Megazord does go down, but frags are being treated on both sides. The blue team find themselves with only two players up. Bowling like Kobe's being pressured hard here by start nine. He needs help, but he's just being swarmed, and it's going to be a tag team as Strife comes in off the top rope and clotheslines him, send him to the spawn queue, and that's a complete wipe there, Sideshow. Yeah, big players coming out, and now we see some of the other classes being utilised. They've got an engineer building a sentry on last. This is a great tactic. The position that he's put the sentry in, possibly not the best for process last, but it's not too bad. Oh, he's actually moving it. He was just uh, he was just building it up there just to get the uh, the easy metal straight from the spawn door. So he's going to continue building that up. And uh, I think a sentry on last is a brilliant idea. It really cements your defensive position and allows you to hold on, especially because they have an uber disadvantage here. So um, that means Kratos is going to get his uber charge way before Yak does. So they have a window of opportunity where they can push where Yak can't use the uber to defend his team. So it looks like FGB will be coming in. They use their Uber through that left-hand side. They're really trying to get the kill on the Demo Man here, but Kobe's doing an excellent job of avoiding them. Unfortunately, it does go down right at the end. Now the Sentry comes into its own as the Uber fades, and it's his Sentry is just going to destroy people. It turns around to look at the combo, but Coconut's possibly got a really good position here. They're just kind of peeking the Sentry. It, it is possibly going to go down. I don't know what's happening here. Coconut does eventually get the frag, but Na Yak's on 99%. Is he going to be able to use it? What a clutch play! He does get onto the point there. Brilliant play by him. Now they need to deal with Coconut behind. Coconut's causing such trouble for them up here. Hobnobs deals with him. And that's a 4k for Hobnobs oh, on the that defense. That was so risky. Like, yeah, he, he took a real gamble there. He just stepped off the point. He was the only guy that could have blocked it. I mean, if uh, Kratos and Soldier had both stood on it, they might have just capped straight up there. But Yag went away, healed him just a few more percent there to get that uber charge and came in and clutched it, as you say. Gaysex doing work though, uh, stuffing Yak and the ball and like I'm Kobe back into that, that rollout passage there, that small tunnel. Uh, they're not able to help move out and help the team and as such, uh, with no heals there you see Hobnobs, Cam and Avenger all going down and that gives a huge three man advantage here for the flying gummy bears to exploit. They're going to be able to walk in pretty much uncontested on the left but they do pop off that uber because they know they have an advantage here. They're looking for frags, they're trying to use this invulnerability, really make it pay. And uh, they have found two demo man and soldier both down here, but there are still blue players alive and they get the charge again! Yak with back to back clutch Ubers here on last, holding on for dear life. And somehow they find themselves in a three on three here. The Uber is out of the equation for the next 20 to 30 seconds. 
But oh, our red team, the playing gummy bears, are just going to go for it. Kratos gets absolutely smashed. There's so many blue players still on that point. They're throwing bodies there. They're able to stop the cat, but they have lost their own medic. And Kratos is going to spawn that a little bit earlier. And that's going to give him potentially an uber advantage here, Saito. Yeah, both of the medics who went down in this situation oh, he's would, normally, would normally signify an end to the... To the craziness that we've been seeing on last year but blue decided to use this opportunity to really take spire and it's worked out perfectly for them they've played really aggressively they bullied the red team out of the point the flying gummy bears just could do nothing about it and they have lost the spire here that's given uh yak and his team your team admirable um an excellent ground to push into mid from yeah jay chapman looking good here but uh Although they might be feeling confident, little do they know they're going to be walking into a crits creek from Kratos soon enough. He is uh, sitting there in a, with a slight lead in that percentage battle, but obviously it builds 20% faster if you're actually trying to build it. But uh, Kratos has been isolated from the rest of his team. He has no one to hit, so he's going to lose that edge. And the, the position wasn't good on middle. They've had to give up territory. They're going to back out here, and they find themselves a man down. Uh, oh, crits and Uber both coming up just at the same time. That crit rocket came out from Coke, but the quick finger of Yak is going to be enough to save him and his pocket. Uber has been popped, and uh, they're now just trying to clean up the players behind. Strife caught out there in the sewer is going to get tag teamed again. Megazord and Avenger taking him down. Start 9 is going to walk forward though to avenge his scout partner. He's on the little spire there. He's trying to beat players forward but he himself gets focused down great play coming out here from Jay Chapman and why wouldn't it be I back them of course but I still believe my boys the flying dummy <laughs> bears they are getting a little bit crumb uh, they're crumbling at the moment as uh, Jay Chapman managed to pick up the spire and they're heading towards last they recognize the fact that they've got two players extra compared to the opposing team and they're gonna try and make this pay but Kratos has got his crits Krieg up it pops quicker than the uh, sorry, it builds quicker than the uber charge. They're gonna get the frag onto that demon one. What they really need is the frag onto the medic. They don't quite get it, but Coconut's got two kills with that crit squeak. That might allow them space to push out onto Spire here. But Yak's got that all important uber charge that he'll he will be able to defend with. It looks like they actually want to push with it. They're gonna be three players up here, both the soldiers and the medic, hanging out in this lobby area. The Gummy Bears have already used their, their ace in the hole, they used their Crits Krieg. They got two frags out of it, they delayed a little bit, but uh, now they have to hold. They're running the Heavy, just because he's got such a large amount of health that uh, the players from Jay Chapman are really going to have to um, work together to take him down. Multiple people are going to have to be focusing on killing him. He just runs off into spawn as well. This Uber Charge possibly not as effective, but everybody runs onto the point while FGB were hiding in spawn to avoid being killed and uh, the score 2-1 in favour of Jay Chapman. That was disappointing, they had this sort of makings of a good hold there, they forced the Uber on one side and then they sort of just kited them, they backed off and tried to make them waste it but they just forgot to have someone uh, able to block the point there but onto this mid fight and a nice rollout from both Gaysex and Megazord getting in fast balling like Kobe's under pressure drops back to me up with his medic but neither team manages to claim first blood just yet and lots of damage being traded the double soldier bomb coming up from Gaysex and Coconut to retake control of their uh, the enemy crate but uh, balling like Kobe's just spamming so much damage onto those soldiers they were forced to drop off then you see the scouts sweeping in start and strife picking up Megazord and Hobnobs but it doesn't matter because pretty much everyone on their team is about to die. Kratos, last man alive, is going to be pistoled down there by Avenger. Makes it a 2k in that middle. And uh, mid has been capped. They're already pushing ahead here onto the spire. And this is nice. This is crisp play. They're not wasting any time here. They're moving forward, taking as much territory as they can whilst they have the advantages. And look at that, Yak! Didn't know where that first rocket came from. The second got him down to 20 health. He didn't pop, but now he's going to pop as he pushes in here coconut is dead the guy who tried to get the force but yak was too strong he's got to hold on and he's going to take it all the way to last there sideshow we're in the driving seat baby yeah that was brilliant play there by jay chapman they managed to crush them on mids and then drove it all the way home really fast play coming out of both of these teams they're able to really push their advantages as, as quickly as they can 
Uh, the rollout's coming in here. Oh, a very risky player here. Oh, 5 HP. The blue demo <laughs> man as he picked up the pack. But nobody was there quick enough from FGB to put the damage on him when it was necessary. Um, it's the first casualty. That's a scout down, a soldier down now as well for Jay Chapman. It looks like this mid might go completely the opposite way. But Yak, Kobe and Cav realize the problem as it's developing and just get out of there before they get caught as well. They might be stood in just a little too far now as well as Kobe. The uh, demo man does go down. Yak and Cav just trying desperately to escape as the... The players from the red team here flooding no! forwards. Yak does go down there to uh, to a little bit of gear sex, and as FGB are swarming in through that uh, that door into last, they're picking up frags left, right, and centre with their uber charge. They're completely invulnerable. Can't shoot the shiny people, but. Uh, Kobe doing a great job of defending there. Got a 3k on last, but just couldn't quite hold it. This one I thought uh, Jai Chapman were running away with it. They find themselves just rolled back from middle there, straight onto their own last and unable to do anything. A taste of their own medicine, in fact. It's 3-2 here. They're still with a one-round lead onto the sixth middle, and there's 15 minutes left, but uh, they've uh, it's been back and forth here. They might be starting to doubt themselves a little bit. They're going to just deal with Gay Sex first. He actually craters there, having been launched skyward. Uh, the second frag comes in quickly. The second soldier of the Flying Gummy Bears is going to join Six in this spawn field. They keep losing players here. They're not really getting in. All oh, Megazord jumps forward just to land the Smackdown onto Law there. And uh, that combined damage around the choke point is just cleaned house all but Kratos. He manages to get. The Crusader's crossbow kill onto Megazord there, he was trying to hound him down, he's defended himself and he's going to keep his team uh, in the contest here, they're going to be able to get an uber charge up, probably just in time as Yak pushes in with his own. Yeah, hopefully Kratos will be able to get his uber charge, he's on 96%, he just needs to dodge a little bit, he does pop it off as soon as he gets it, he's going to be trying to keep as many players alive as possible. Yeah, it's actually on the casualty from his team, and three players have been lost from Jay Chapman, only a scout and a soldier alive to defend Yak. They're going to back off to the uh, to the spire here and try and put some spam on them as they come out. Whenever a team is pushing through a tiny little door, it's the easiest place to get damage on them, so they're the positions that teams like to hold. They're the places where they like to apply the spam because uh, you're guaranteed to hit them if you know that they're coming through the door. Oh, both soldiers rocket jumping through the midair. Kratos is the one who goes down, actually, and Megazord picks up the other frag on the soldier as well. Great play by Megazord as he's coming into last now. It's only a demo man and a scout left alive. Law's still got quite a bit of health. He's got the stickies on the point, but the stickies are getting blasted off fairly quickly. It's not as easy to hold as Badlands is with your demo man alive. And that's 4-2. It's still very much neck and neck here. There's only two rounds in it with 12 minutes remaining. It's definitely possible for flying gummy bears to come back. Yeah, and that's the sort of dynamic you see in these sixes games. Like uh, Holding last can be quite easy because you've got a choice of classes, but that re-push from uh, 1 to 2 is fraught with danger. And uh, we just saw the flying gummy bears stumble, but they're on to another middle here. It's a two-round game. And... They're trying to pull out all the stops here. They're really committing deep this time. They're not really playing as passive as previously, but the end result seems to be the same. They're going to lose a lot of players. Kratos is trying to get out with Law, but he's on the wrong side of him. He would really love a meat shield right now. He's going to whip out the Uber, so gets a hit there, but still doesn't have the charge. Law's going huge, picking up three frags, kills off ball like I'm Kobe with the ball, then turns around, gets the sticky onto Megazord, and Kratos gets his Uber. He's actually got advantage here. They're not even going to let up second. They're going to commit harder to try and get that medic pick onto Yak. They do not want to let him get his charge. He's on 99. He's healing the scout. He's got the charge. He knows he's safe now. As long as he can hit that alt attack, he's going to pop off that charge. He's moving forward here, flashing his players. And both medics coming up with the goods right there. That was an incredible passage of play, Sancho. It is, but it's Jay Chapman who come out on top. They've got six players up. FGB have only got three players up, so it's time to back off for FGB. Oh, but it's going huge in that little section. Just runs into a soldier, meat shots him twice, hits him for 100 damage to maximum that that scattergun can do almost, and uh, smacks him back into the spawn queue. So it's 5v5 at the moment. Both teams with about 50% on their uber charge, but it looks like... 
Yeah, it looks like Jay Chapman really want to push in through this left-hand side. They don't need a new but to get in through the choke points because the left-hand side is much less closely held by the team. They're just stacking the point. Nobody from FGB gets on it to try and block it. And 5-2 the score. It's running away from them. FGB really need a strong mid to be able to play off the back of and, uh, and get back into this game. Yeah, and that's sort of a, a common rookie mistake where you can spend the whole map running away from teams with an advantage, but once you get to your own last, you can't run away. You have to fight, you have to block that point because it's caps that are all important here, never mind your damage, your frags. It's the rounds that win games here, and right now Jai Chapman are winning 5-2, to two, 9 minutes 50 left on the clock, but this mid fight is much more of a contest here as Creed rallied the troops of the playing Gun Bears forward. They're going to get first blood on Fallen like I'm Kobe. He's going to be joined by Hobnobs and Megazord. Oh, but it looks like Kratos is going to get <laughs> crushed there by the flank from Avenger, who kills off Coconut and Law. Actually picking up a 4k on middle. going to get a fifth frag there onto Strife, who we have been told is famous, but we must sack our researchers because nobody told us, Saisho. <laughs> exactly. So it's coming up with the goods on that mid fight. He protects his medic perfectly there from that scout right at the end. So Yak is gonna have his Uber charge. Uber charge very important to secure after the mid fight because uh, it's very useful for pushing last and for pushing second here. So Kratos is not gonna have his Uber charge. That means that they have to hold in a much more passive defensive position. It's just runs in there. Unfortunately, he does get taken down along with Megazord, but Yak should still be able to bully this one in. Oh, that was a huge air shot. I don't know whether you saw it on camera, but Coconut absolutely destroyed Cav there. He juggled him up in the air and obliterated him. That's such good DM there from the soldier, um, from FGB. Destroyed. So Yak unable to really use his Uber charge, but he doesn't want to use it because if they use it with only three players alive, it's a bit of a waste. So he's trying to hold on until they get rest of his players spawn, and then he should be able to use it. Uh, more effectively. Start 9 is going to be running the Sniper in this situation. Uh, it is Uber for Uber now because they took a little too long to push. Start 9 is going to be holding these choke points, attempting to attempting to get a pick on somebody, but the Uber has come in now from Kobe and Yak. Yeah, flying through the air there, they get the force, right? but uh, our blue team here Jai Chapman find themselves very short-handed. There are actually four players down right now. Even they've got Cav and Ball and like I'm Kobe on the field. There's not much they're going to be able to do to sort of stem the flow here of red players into middle. Uh, not even a good position would be able to overcome that. But look at Ball and like I'm Kobe. Is he AFK? He's just standing in the red PC area here uh, with his face into the wall. He's re he's back again. It's all part of his plan. Does he realize what side of the map he's on? He's going all the way to the, the wrong end. He's coming, he's walking around here. He's going to try and spawn camp, but there's nobody dead. <laughs> the greatest spawn camp ever. Press tab, mate. The spawn camp will not work. He's finally figured out. He's going to start to move forward here. There is action going on, though, on that uh, blue spire CP2 slash 4. The red team sideshows flying gummy bears are doing work, and probably because they don't have to contest the demo man. He's actually sticky trapping their spawn camp in a spawn that isn't active. He's sticky He's trapping his own spawn there, <laughs> isn't he? No, 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 I'm so confused watching him. I'm more confused than he is. <laughs> no, he was, oh, he was sticky trapping okay. the correct spawn, but he's he seems AMK to have gone AFK again. I'm not sure what's going on there with him. <laughs> but uh, FGV using the opportunity perfectly to come back. And uh, we'll have to see if he's possibly timed out or something. I, I don't really know what the issue is there with their demo man, but uh, they're not asking for a pause or anything like that in chat. Six and a half minutes remaining, the score 5 3. It's very possible for FGB to come back into this, especially if they've got the demo man advantage just inherently off the back of it. Um, they are going to be making their way into mid. Much more aggressive here from FGB. Coconut the first one to die and uh, a lot of damage coming onto that top area. The top area is so important to control as we've said before just because it's much easier to do damage from a high ground. It goes down to 30 health as Cav is escorting his medic out of the fight. Or should be escorting his medic out of the fight. They took a little while there to back off but they have backed off now. It does seem like Ballin' Like I'm Kobe is... Uh, is finally making his way to mid now. He's he's dealt with whatever he had to deal with, eating his sandwich, 
whatever was going on in his life and he's ready to engage on the spire. Yeah, he is back in the game and uh, Zai uh, Chapman made a, a real go with that middle despite not having a demo man, so credit to them. It is Uber versus Uber here. We're in this uh, classic standoff between two and three and I mean, you know, the sort of, uh, I guess, TF2 etiquette would dictate that the, the team control the middle should be the one to push and more so because they're actually two rounds behind, they need to try and make something happen, they need to try and engineer a play. And uh, even if they go in here and die, they do have the benefit of spawning relatively closer than their opposition. So it's that's why the, it's considered correct for them to push, I guess, because they have the, a slight edge here, or some more options. It's not as catastrophic. If they fail, they might just lose that uh, one point, but they even have a chance to contest it. We're going to see Gaysex bombing through here, and he is immediately denied. I mean, he's tried that a few times. He's getting a little predictable. Now, i got to mix it up, but they did go for that straight-up tag bomb. Telegraph that one and uh, it didn't make anything happen but that's another sort of strategy you can have there like the reverse pick where you sacrifice a player and hope your opponent picks but uh, I'm calling it too soon because Coconut is coming here with the uber from Kratos and he's uh, forced out the enemy uber but they've had to commit so deep there's so much ground to cover Kratos has overcommitted himself to this play and he's gonna struggle to survive he is doing his best against Megazord Whips out the crossbow but can't connect an arrow, wouldn't have been fatal anyway and uh, with the flying gummy bears committing heavily to that push side show they've just ended up going just a little bit too far and those are the sort of margins you're dealing with here in competitive 6v6. Yeah it really is a fine balance, you have to, uh, once these players have got a bit more experience you'll see them honing their skills and getting better and better. As of now, they're, they're still doing incredibly well. I'm very impressed with the level of play, actually, for these players, as they're all new to competitive. They're doing very well. Um, the Uber charges at uh, a significant advantage for Yak and the rest of Jay Chapman. The fight's all hanging, hanging around Choke at the moment. They have popped the Uber here, but now Kratos needs to escape, and the rest of his team needs to help him escape. A nice shot there by Law, a nice pipe in the midair um, to deny that soldier from killing his medic. But now Megazord's in, he tries to kill Kratos, he's actually going behind from rollout. No he's not, he's thinking about it. He's dueling a scout at the moment, the scout is going to win that one. And they're going to be able to pick up Spire possibly here. But Kratos does have a bit of an uber advantage. I think they could uh, attack this one. You see Demo Man trying to move forward and spam those scouts again using the, those air detonations from Sticky Launcher that are so powerful. Contest that Spire and the... We do see Jai Courtney or Chapman, Jai Courtney, what the fuck, <laughs> with uh, three players down, just a respawn coming in there now, so that means they might be able to put up a fight on middle here, they're trying to buy as much time as possible, Yag's gone down to gay six, uh, Hobnobs and Avenger are going to join him, and the Uber comes out there from Kratos, who refuses to lose here, there's still a two round disadvantage for his team, but there's two minutes and 20 seconds and if they can get this next cap real quick that leaves them set up for uh, a real opportunity to tie the game up in the dying seconds Sideshow. It does, we've got two minutes remaining, they need two rounds, uh, as a general rule it's about a round a minute if you absolutely go as fast as you can but of course they can tie this current round up in far less than a minute, looks like the big defense is coming out here from Itz and Cav, Cav running the heavy which I'm trying to find, uh, where on earth is Cav? Oh, Cav's in spawn, that's why I can't find him. And uh, it is on Engineer. He's building up his sentry in the same position that we saw it previously, but it did a lot of work the last time it was in that position, so I have no no problems there. Cav, uh, just considering which class he wants to play, he's gone back in spawn. I, I imagine he's communicating to his team, and they want some other kind of off-class, but I don't think they quite know uh -oh. what yet. So they're going to bring the scouts in. They're not going to do well against this sentry gun. And already one scout gets dropped. Start 9 too far ahead of Kratos. He couldn't flash him there. And in fact, Strife will go down as well. So this defense looking really solid right now from Jay Chapman. Uh, they've managed to hold on for dear life. It's only Kratos left alive on the opposing team. And he isn't going to be able to put a dent on that point. They've held on. And with being two rounds up, they don't even need to push here. They can just sit back and uh, Turtle on last, GG being called there, but I feel like Kratos and the Flying Gummy Bears aren't going to go down without a fight, they want to get one more round in the board, they want to save a little face here, the point is almost capped, Megazord's pushing up onto the Spire there, 
uh, trying to retake a little territory for the blue team, but he is going to go down. And 40 seconds left on the clock. A, a win is out of the question here. I think mathematically impossible, but they can make it 5-4. to four. And, and they can, uh, you know, earn the respect of the viewers here, Saito. Absolutely. I am still cheering for my boys. I think that was a very good showing from both teams. They are still trying desperately to come in. Strife and start nine, trying to make something happen on the flank. Distracting for Coconut and Law. Law, the demo man for FGB. The only one really left alive. Kratos gets a saw and Uber saw there, but... Uh, isn't able to <laughs> and then we have a Boston Basher kill as well people really trying for the crazy kills now that the match is uh, is technically over we have officially finished now the score 5-3 in favor of Jay Chapman yep that's right Saito you were wrong How does I, it feel? I was I this was, I was very ever. wrong <laughs> the first time ever yeah, this is the first time I've actually ever been wrong. It's quite quite the experience. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, FGB don't quite manage to pick it up, but it was an incredibly close game, and it was fairly high-skilled for what I was... Uh, genuinely what I was expecting um, out of this game. They surpassed my expectations. It was well-coordinated. They had uh, fairly good rollouts. The, the teams were... They seemed like they were communicating fairly well. They were pushing through... The, the same entrances and it was all coordinated I was I was very impressed admirable yeah I uh, really enjoyed it it was as you say more than I expected I think we've underestimated some of these Archimedes Cup teams I'm looking at the logs right now and you can see TZX Yak producing the big carry round there as medic only dying seven times but Importantly, getting 22 assists. I mean, you know, he was healing the players who were in the fight, which is something you really want to try and do as medic. There's no point in sitting back healing players who don't necessarily need it. He was up there, he was in the thick of it, and he produced some big milks. But obviously, as the the body here, he is expected to be capable, but also had to be impressed by uh, the scouts as well. They produced uh, good numbers there. Look at it's 34 for 13 for 19. Pretty devastating here against these uh, flying gummy bear soldiers. He seemed to have a real tough time of it. Gasex with 31 deaths and Coconut with 24. But uh, yeah, I was impressed for sure, Saito. Look how close the mid fights were as well. It was only uh, one in it. Both teams were able to win a lot of mids, but it was my boys, Jai Chapman, coming out on top. It absolutely was. If you wonder it by kills as well, it seems like Itz was really going ham there. It goes 34 for 19 and Megazord close behind him with 26 for 21 and he did 10k damage, which is really impressive for uh, for a soldier, especially seen as he was the roaming soldier. So the, the discrepancy in 6v6 between the pocket and the roaming soldier, the pocket normally runs the, the shotgun. He's the one who sticks with the med. He has to protect him. He gets a lot more heals. So on in this particular situation, Hobnobs, their pocket, got 10,000 uh, points of heals, whereas Megazord, their roaming soldier, who was using the gunboat so he can jump around whilst taking much less damage, only got 5k heals, which was 15% of the total, which was half what uh, half what his pocket got, and he was still able to put out big damage numbers, so big big props to him. I think uh, the important thing, like this is something we have to teach all new players, the only important stat is uh, air shots. You see that AS there. Uh, and if you sort that, it was in fact uh, Flying Gummy Bears Coconut who topped the air shots chart with 11 air shots across those three minutes. So that automatically means that his team won. It doesn't matter how many rounds were capped. If you hit the most air shots, you're a winner. You're Absolutely. the real winner. Yeah, Coconut can put that in his frag movie and be proud of that, and uh, he doesn't care about the actual result. You know, as long as you can put it in a frag movie, that's what matters. No, I this was could, actually seeing uh, some really good shots going out there. The the DM of both teams seemed seemed pretty high. Untapped potential, you know what I mean? Admirable. This is this is talent. Yeah, and uh, they can sit and listen back to our incredible casting, and you know, pick up some more tips as well, right, Sajo? But, uh, of course, this, dropping knowledge bombs left, right and centre. <laughs> this could be the, the end of it for today. We're really unsure as to if we can find another game due to the sort of postponement uh, of 
of the, most of the games due to technical difficulties. But I want to see what's the status of the raffles right now. Oh, Gilles isn't here anymore. No, unfortunately, it seems like the uh, the Twitch spam has has broken. <laughs> Scrap.tf. It says SQL connection failed apparently. So uh, there have <laughs> been some technical difficulties there, possibly because they were just using it so much. But I have been keeping an eye on the raffles. They've been going on. Uh, pretty much, as he said, every 15 minutes there's been one come up. Unfortunately, they had to disable comments because people were treating it like the Twitch chat and spamming everywhere. But um, I think a lot of fun had by everybody, and uh, they've they've managed to love Scrap.tf to death. So that they've given they've hugged him to death. Uh, Kratos is talking to me here, so we'll not end the show just yet. He wants to come in and talk. Uh, he wants a little interview. You know, he wants to get, share his experiences of uh, being a buddy on the losing team, I guess. So uh, I'm going to drag him in here. There's Hildreth as well. Let's drag everyone in. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll discuss what's gone down. Kratos is mutant and deaf, and hopefully he can fix that. But we'll talk to Hildreth for the meantime. Hildoge, are you with us? I am indeed. So tell us, what's the status of the tournament right now? We've, we've seen the ETFTL news post, you know, but we want to hear it. First time, can you put a PR spin on on it for us, man? Oh, I don't know how much I can spin this. I'll, I'll see if I can somehow make this sound like your fault, Admiral. <laughs> you spin right. me right round, baby, right round. Like a record, baby, round, round. I think we're right oh, skipping tonight. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We've decided to abandon rounds two and three in terms of... Mm. Yeah, well, because of the technical difficulties we've had. Some teams have played round two um, because they were played on the private server, which we allowed at the time. But now we've just decided to, just to um, get rid of round two and round three. By get rid of, I mean delay round two and round three. So that will be moved to a later date, probably next Sunday, provisionally. So we might have to move the tournament back, the schedule back a bit, which is a little frustrating, but there's not much Disgusting. we can do at this point. Unfortunately, they will have to come back, spend the next week working out what, what went wrong and how to fix it. But on the on the bright side, I did manage to catch a little bit of some of the games that were going on. I have to say, um, that game looked pretty good. Were there any uh, any shock results that we missed in the other games? I don't know, it's really hard to say a shock <laughs> in a cup like this, in a tournament like this. Um, with, uh, Commander X, did your team win? Yeah, we played a team of Americans who this was very much their first competitive TF2 experience. They were running non-cookie cutter setup. Uh, so yeah, we won pretty comfortably. So you've been educating some Americans on how to play TF2. I'd say it's been a good day, if that's the case. You didn't take uh, no prisoners, Commander X. You smashed them with the two scout, two soldier sledgehammer. Yeah, we, didn't, we, didn't, uh, we run a sniper, I think, in the last round because they stopped going to mid and just climbed up Spire with the heavy. Which actually that's impressive. <laughs> pose, pose a pretty strong. We come from a corner like let's stomp them at choke. I was a heavy on spire, so we had to wait for people to flank for a while. Didn't and then we just started up running a sniper. That? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the enigma spot, right? That's probably where they got the play from. These guys we probably stole <laughs> it from them. <laughs> we do uh, also have Kratos and Yakin from the game we just cast. We have the two buddies here. Commiserations to Kratos, but obviously huge congratulations to my boy Yak. That was all about the Jai Chapman. Yeah, um, I was happy with my boys. My next door neighbour, Cav, really happy with him. <laughs> tell us the st- tell us a little bit about your team. You know, give us the the story, the background. Well, um, originally it was me and Hobnobs, and uh, we were just looking for players, and came across an ass boy because he's a pretty funny guy, and he's quite nice. And so we were looking for more players, and I asked my next door neighbour. He's like supreme rank on CS:GO, so right. I was like, "Do you want to play some TF2?" And he was like, "Sure." And yeah, we played with that, and then met Itz and 
I met Itz in a lobby and he raped face. So I was like, do you want to play? And he said, I've already got a team. And then they ended up folding. So I picked him up and Megazord Nasboy got. I'm really happy with Everyone played well. How did your uh, first round game go? Um, we got a default win because the other team folded. Jackpot! <laughs> 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 but, uh, so you, you've played one game. You're happy with the performance. Are you, uh, have you got, you know, big dreams now? Are you gunning for the final, Yak? Oh, we're gunning for the final. All the cash money. Nah. Um, we will think that we'll do alright, and most of the players will be able to, like, play to 4 or 5 next season. That's what we hope. But, yeah. That's pretty impressive, really, too. To- before it, they've only played in centres and lobbies and be able to get them to a Div 5-4 level and get yeah. them interested that's the most important thing well uh, that's what we've been when we were piecing W we were looking to 4-5 and we did alright So I have, a, I have a question for you Yak if you're a new team of brand new players coming from TF2 centre and TF2 lobby maybe a couple of people played Div 6 before that's okay but are you going to Enter season 20. That's um, the first question. Yes, but I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, depends if I get kicked from Connor's team. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you might, might should be tempted to leave. Are you going to enter season 20, play, play a season with these guys, and then see if you can enter the uh, raffle? Because I'm not sure if you've mentioned this, Admirable, about the raffle that ETFTO have going on for the teams mm-hmm. that participate in this tournament. Yeah, we, we talked about it way back at the start, but I mean, he still had uh, GDL on, but it's uh, a raffle for people that complete all their necessary matches in the Cup and go on to play in Season 20. And, and to complete Season 20, Hildreth? Yeah, they need to complete. Well, do you think we're just handing out free money here? Yeah, <laughs> so, so that... Uh, if as a player you don't have to stay with your team or whatever but as a player you complete all your games in the cup and you play the full season in ETF2L that started at the end of January will be entered into a raffle for another 200 euro worth of items I believe so uh, just that that other extra little encouragement you need you know that's the the golden frying pan on the end of the stick I guess although that might be worth more than 200 euros I don't know but uh We've got to throw it over to Kratos as well. Obviously, he's joined us as well. Uh, how did your first game go? Uh, it was a- actually against some guys who were completely new to TF2 competitive, I guess. like They didn't even mm-hmm. have much or uh, many lobbies. It was like 100 lobbies for each of them, and one of them like didn't have a lobby at all. So they were really new to 66 competition as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was like 5-0 for us. But yeah, ruthless. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We, we've been practicing for some weeks as well. Like we played against some the four and the five guys. Like we couldn't play the last one week because our Roma had some troubles and he just got his PC back. But actually, he's playing at a friend's home with some like other gear. So we were a bit rusty, I would say. But yeah, it was alright. What's the, the camaraderie like in your team? Is there a good team spirit? Like, are you going to be able to shrug off this defeat and move on to the next round? Uh, I hope so. Like, Did you get uh, angry? Were you furious? Oh, no. It's fine. Like, we did a pretty good job at some points. Like, there were so many good pushes, and, like, the deathmatch was all right as well. It's like some things we have to work on, some basic stuff that we, like, follow up a little bit faster on the damage. But all in all, we were pretty all right, I guess. Was yeah, like me and me and Saito were watching and discussing at the end there, and it was genuinely a, a good game. There was a lot of good play. We were impressed. I think both teams uh, showing a lot of potential. Uh, how are your thoughts are on the the next round? Do you think that you're going to be able to progress easy enough to the knockouts? But beyond that, Kratos, do you have your eye on the prize? Are you going for that grand final finish? Uh, yeah, we are. Like, actually, it's not because of the prize money but we're actually aiming to win this cup so I hope we like can do some better in the next round like I guess Jack's team was pretty decent as well like like I said we played against some the four and five teams and we actually often beat them you played against us the other day as well didn't you um uh, possible 
a Mercon demo as well, though, for it. Yeah, we've been struggling a bit with finding a demo. Like, Law's um, kind of real-life friend, actually, like a Norman real-life. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been played with different demos because he wasn't actually sure if we can play or on time he wasn't around. So we played with some other demos as well. And Law is like, I don't know, he played for five years. Five years ago, he played some 66. But he just started to play 66 to again. What? Oh, I'm thinking of a different German player. Doesn't matter. Uh, uh, what I was going to ask then is, like, you guys say you've been practicing. How much uh, time have you planned to put into your preparation this week now that you've got another seven days before the next round? Mm, Are you going to be yeah, cleaning we, it up? Yeah, we try to put as many time as in as possible. Like, I have some PCWs going with C-Play, but um, beside that, like, if I'm not at work or something, we've probably been practicing. Like, that's a good thing of the six. I really like it. You can, like, play whenever. Like, you can, it's Friday at, like, I don't know, Friday morning, and there's games going on in T4s. It's so good. So we can, like, just whenever we are around, we're going to play a bit, I guess. And Yak, are you guys going to go hard this week? As much as we can, we're going to be... Seeing what we can do when everyone's available to play. Oh, we've got Gene back as well. What's the the latest on Scrab.tf? Who killed it? Uh, somebody decided to update my SQL, uh, the 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 database engine, right? As uh, mm -hmm. I posted the latest raffle, and so that's why the SQL connection failed. Message was up, but uh, at right now we're 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 a bit over capacity in terms of the users but the, the site should be fully functional and we're running the last raffle of the day which is about seven keys right now so you should type exclamation point raffle and join that how did the raffles go everything uh went without a hitch until that point yeah i'd say so um some people you know were upset if i was perhaps late on uh, posting a raffle but you know, I, I managed <laughs> i survived we salute you. We didn't uh, figure out how you uh, scrapped me harder finished up. Did you hear from your, your compatriots? How, how did it? How did they do? Uh, I think I looked at the logs. I think they lost 6-1. to one. Um, So hopefully, you know, I, I see them talking about it in, in, our, in our chat and they, they have resolve. They have the desire to do better next time. So hopefully we'll oh, see some of them. I'll let you in on the secret there. Um, I think the other team may have broken the rule on pausing in that, so it might not be the last you've heard of it, but we'll have a look at it and see what's going on. Yeah, I actually saw some grumblings on that matter, so uh, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Oh, by the Pro way, Hildur, why there's no like pause allowed in the game? Like On the first game, we had like one of them timing out like just straight after the start, and because we didn't have any Archon or couldn't pause the game, we basically just waited on the middle for five minutes for the, their last to come back. You didn't but have any like, pause? No. It's like, uh, it's unpausable, I guess. SV pausable. Was oh, yeah, that's but we didn't have a or whatever. Yeah. No, it should have been set. They should have removed it. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, I just wanted to remind you, just in case. Go on, we we'll look pause back again. in front of all these people. <laughs> there's, a, there's a riot smolder in here on Twitch chat. I just want to spell it out in uh, no uncertain terms that there won't be any more games played tonight so if you're asking for the next game of Riot you're going to be rioting for 7 days until next Sunday I think but uh, that's pretty much the end of the cast for tonight I believe Saicho it is indeed we, uh, we await with anticipation until next Sunday when things will be running much smoother they will run like absolute melted butter as it drips off Admirable's tongue, and uh, it will it will just be like Cog's turn, and it will just be bish bash bosh through the stages of the tournament. We'll just be bringing you non-stop TF2 action for the Archimedes Cup as it progresses through the later rounds. Yeah, shout out to everyone who was involved today. Uh, obviously, lots of people working behind the scenes at TF2 Center, like Master Noob, Mother Teresa was helpful earlier too, Kelty. You got held with there. So many ETF to admins. I've seen Ash doing work and various people. Yes. We had Commander X and Stinson. Joined... Stinson out. Big shout out to Stinson. It doing looks... work as well. We had uh, Commander X in for interview. We've had Yak, Kratos. 
And Jill joining us right from the start as well and just manning the raffle cannon that has uh, kept people in here. And obviously, shout out to the viewers. Uh, like I only was taking a peak now and again, but I think we had like over 12,000 1200 at some point but uh, the tournament didn't go exactly as planned but I think we uh, held it down for for a while inside show we uh, we waffled for a significant <laughs> amount of time but <laughs> we we seemed to steadily gain and gain and gain and gain viewers the more we were waffling and then uh, when we played we, we took a slight dip and then it started building back up again so I think people were we're actually hyped just to hear the admirable voice. Big shout out to Ari as well, because uh, he was the one who was providing us with the STVs and stats and stuff when we were so uncertain as to what was going on, and Kratos for reaching out with that second game. Otherwise, it would have been just one game, having endured an hour and a half wait for it. But uh, we did okay. I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned, not from Team 4's TV. We obviously did an immaculate job. Shout out to my boy Suyo. I got Saicho here as well. And uh, Hildreth, you were very helpful in the build up to this as well. But lessons learned. We're going to do better next weekend. Mark it down in your diary, guys. Sunday, the uh, 18th, we'll be back for more. We're going to go harder. There'll be more raffles, there'll be more games. That's yeah, all I've got. The, uh, the raffles are, are going to get much better, uh, much more high tier uh, as the cup comment, uh, goes forward. So you'll notice they got better over the course of the night and, and they're just going to keep on getting larger. Awesome. I'm going to throw it out to anyone here who wants to you know, jump in with your shout outs as we close out the show. Uh, spread your love to the internet, please. Go for it. Shout out to EDFTL for organizing this cup and to Hildris, my boy. <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise just shout out to Yuppa. Visit www.yuppagamer.eu <laughs> And shout out to Skeech and Moogle. And to my team, obviously. That's it. And no no fear, brother. Sorry. No, fuck him. <laughs> it's a free for all. Go for it, Yag. He isn't even um, watching my games. Can't. Shout out to my boy Avenger. He's got a rec post up. You should uh, go and comment on how good he is. And shout out to Hobnobs, who bought Steven a PC. Well, gave him a PC. And everyone on my team. I love you guys. Oh, the link's deleted in chat. That's it. We're done. Cut it, Sue.